time, nor the second time, that I've learned you take delight in teasing the horses. But it is the first time I've caught you, and it is the last. Take what money I owe you and leave my farm. But, Mother, he's wrong for throwing the stones at us. Yes, he is wrong. But it's his right to do it. I don't understand. It, it doesn't make sense. No, and it never will. But it's the man's world, not the horse's. Keep your head high and proud. Grow up gentle and good. Lift your feet up well when you trot and never bite or kick, even in play. Remember this, and hopefully you will belong to a master who cares. But we do have a good master, Mother. He gives me carrots at the gate and smiles when he pats me. Shh, my boy. You'll be leaving the meadow soon. I don't want to leave the meadow. Leave you? But you must. I heard the master speaking to Squire Gordon. The squire has taken a fancy to you, as well he should, my handsome one. And it's been arranged. Where am I to go? What am I to do? I don't know. But remember what your father always said, and carry it with you when you go. Do your best, and leave the rest. It will all come right, some day or night. My son. But he's coming to take me away. I know. And there's no sadder day for a mother. But I'm also proud that you've grown so well. It's time for you to leave. And you will leave with your head held high, like the champion you are. Well, <sighs> Duchess, my pet, there's no need for me to explain. I believe you know what is going on. Don't worry, old girl. The squire's a good man with the love of a good horse. He picked your dark one, so he does indeed know his horses. And he'll care for him kindly. That's the only reason I'm letting him go. Come, dark one. You have much to learn. That day in the meadow was to be the last time I saw my mother. was right. I did have a lot to learn. I had never seen so many men, heard so much noise, felt so frightened and alone. Not a case of the fidgets, have you? I don't blame you. I'm not fond of steam spitting engines myself. Nice soft mouth. You'll rain easy. Strong legs. Good back. And it seems a gentle nature. The good squire's got himself a beauty. Pony made of flesh and blood? Flesh and blood and temper. He's too fond of his own will, and that won't suit me. And do you think that treatment like this will make him fond of your will? 
He had no business to turn and gawk at that black coat of yours. His road was straight on. I must say, Mr. Sawyer, that more unmanly, brutal treatment of a little pony it was never my painful lot to witness. I beg you, release the pony from the bearing rein. Give him his full natural head, and, and I'll wager he'll pull the stronger for it. It is not my choice to use the bearing rein. My mistress feels it to be in fashion for her horses to appear head high and proud. You best tend to your own horses and leave me to mine. Remember, Mr. Sawyer, we shall all have to be judged according to our work someday, whether they be toward man or toward beast. <laughs> you best remember, you are paid to do what your mistress and master want. This man seemed grieved by the whipping of that pony and that awful thing they call a bearing rein. Perhaps my new master wouldn't want to put it on me. Perhaps he would be a... Oh, how I long to be running with the other colts near the pond. Oh, your new shoes feel a bit strange, do they? Steady, boy. We'll have a good swing and get the tickle out of your feet. If this is a man's world, and not a horse's world, then I knew that I must do my best to please those men. Thinking of what I saw happen to that poor pony helped me as I galloped further away from the meadow. How does he go? First rate, sir. He's as fast as a deer and fine spirit, too. The lightest touch will guide him, and he's the study of discipline. Even guns going off at close range won't stir him a step to right or left. In my opinion, he hasn't been ill-used. That's well, John. Well, my dear, how do you like him? Oh, he's a handsome creature indeed. What shall we call him? Ebony? He's as black as ebony. Oh, no. Ebony doesn't suit him. Well, then, uh, Blackbird, like your uncle's old horse. Oh, no, he's far handsomer than old Blackbird ever was. Yes, some years of beauty. Beauty, that's it. What do you say to calling him Black Beauty? Black Beauty? Hmm, a good day. I'm down here, I am. My name is Merrylegs. And who might you be when you're at home? The master and his mistress named me Black Beauty. Black Beauty? It seems to suit you, don't you think? I don't know. I hadn't really thought about it. Well, you should, boyo. Names are very important. I am called Merrylegs because I give the children happy little rides. I'm also very handsome, I am. But my legs are so short that Merrylegs seems more appropriate. Are you going to live next door to me? Yes, I suppose so. Well, then, I hope you are good-tempered. I do not like any neighbor of mine that bites. So, it is you who have turned me out of my stall. I fail to see why a colt like you can be the reason that a lady like me is turned out of her very own stall. I beg your pardon. I have turned no one out. The man that brought me here put me in this stall. I had nothing to do with it. And as to my being a colt, I have turned four years old as of this day, and I am a grown-up horse. I never had words yet with horse nor mare, and it is my wish to live in peace. Well, we shall see. And my grown-up horse. I don't wish to have any further words with you. That is Ginger. She has a nasty habit of biting and snapping. That's why she's called Ginger. And she is the main reason I'm glad to meet you. 
ginger. Pepper is more like it. Anyway, happy birthday, Black Beauty. Thank you. But it is not all that happy. No. Look you, in addition to being very handsome, I am also 12 years old. I know a great deal, and I can tell you that there is not a better place for a horse in all the land. I know of one in a meadow very far from here. you know how to be kind? Kind? I never had anyone, horse or man, that was kind to me, or that I cared to please. Perhaps if you tried. I never had the chance to try. From the first, I've had master after master who wanted but one thing, to wear the spirit out of me and to make me into a quiet, humble, obedient piece of horse flesh. Horse flesh. <laughs> If I wasn't being ridden at such a pace to bring me to my haunches in exhaustion, I was locked into the bearing rein. Oh, you haven't felt it yet, but you will. Your head tossed high, obliged to hold it there. And for hours on end, you're unable to move it at all, except with a jerk still higher. Force is all I know of man's kindness. It seems different than what you say here. Of course. But for how long? You don't think that you'll spend the rest of your days standing happily under a shade tree here. <laughs> a horse stays with a master until he fetches a good price. Or until he's injured or broken. Then it's off to another master. Then another. Till he reaches the bottom of man's ugly world. Mind you, see to it you don't get hurt. And make up your mind that men are your enemies. And that you must defend yourself. I did. I feel sorry for you. Don't. Just beware. I wish I could think about things as you do, but I can't. Not after all I've been through. Let's find another way, sir. We must make it to the river and cross her before she swells and overflows. On, Black Beauty, on. What's the matter with him, John? Why won't he go on across the bridge? But the storm spooked him, most likely, sir. I'll lead him across. Come now, Beauty. Hoi, hoi, hoi! What's the matter, my good man? The bridge is broken in the middle, and part of it has been carried off! Thank God, you beauty. Give Black Beauty a special ration of oats and bran. He saved our necks tonight, John, and arranged for rooms at the inn. Good care of his horse, mind. He's more than something special to me and his master. And put that pipe out. With straw about in a stable, there's no place for a pipe. Oh, uh, consider it gone. Well, good night, then. Straw about in the stable, there's no place for a pipe. In a pig's eye, I've been running stables longer than you've been walking the earth. You cheeky upstart. Huh. Come 
Ouch, you fools! Run! All right, stay if you want. It's no concern of mine. I tried to get you out. No doubt we were all being foolish, but there was nobody we knew to trust in. I thought of what Ginger told me that day under the shade tree. Make up your mind that men are your enemies. Over here! Water! Whoa, go! <laughs> Your pipe, eh? Need one ask what happened to it. Over here, more water over here! Come, beauty, it's time for us to be off. Here, take this horse and care for him while I go back for the others. Steady, because you act as if you want to go back inside that inferno as well. Did you think you'd lost me, beauty? Ah, I saved what I could. Alas, I fear that some were lost to the flames. Ah, but I saved the best of the lot in you, boy. I heard that many of the horses refused to leave the stable, despite the heat and flames. Well, it is an odd thing, sir. Horses know who they can trust. They won't come out of a stable when there's fire or flood unless they trust you. I don't know why, but they won't. Not one in twenty. Seems that Black Beauty has put trust in you, then. And I in him, sir. That Joe Green is such a little chap, even for 14 years. Is that why you like him so much? Because he's a little runt, like you? No, because he's quick and willing to learn about caring for us. He's a kind-hearted lad, too. Something you would know nothing about. Has he mauled you about yet? He grooms horses like his hands were made of bricks. I find that if I lean down a bit when he grooms me, he finds the proper places to rub sooner or later. If I were to lean down a bit, he would find himself grooming nothing but thin airy wood. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a good six months before he'll be of any use whatsoever. I like him nonetheless. He takes pains to learn. He gives pains. I like him too. And he's an handsome chap he is. Of course, most short creatures are. <laughs> <laughs> Young Joe, you must care for the stables and look to the horses while I'm away. Give this note to Dr. Morgan, give Beauty a rest at the inn, and be back as soon as you can. Now then, John, ride for your life. That is, for your mistress' life. There's not a moment to lose. You must go well tonight, if ever you did. With the life of my mistress depending on my hooves, I galloped as fast as I could lay my feet to the ground. I don't believe that my old grandfather, who won the race at Newmarket, could have gone any faster. this time of night. Mrs. Gordon is very poorly, sir. My master wants you to come at once. He thinks she'll die if you don't leave at once. Uh, here is a note. I shall leave now, but my son has taken my horse. Can I use yours? He's come at a gallop all the way. If there is a horse who can return the same way, it's Black Beauty. You won't be needing that crop, sir. Black Beauty will go till he drops. Take care of him, sir. I shouldn't like any harm to come to him. Ride faster than the wind, my big heart. You're steaming like a pot on fire. I suppose I should get you a big bucket of cold water to drink. And then after you cool off a bit, perhaps you'll be needing a 
warm blanket or something. I wish John were here. My poor beauty, my good horse. You saved your mistress' life. Yes, you saved her. The doctor said that beauty ran faster than any horse he'd ever seen in his life. As if he knew what was wrong with his mistress. Could that be possible? I knew not what the matter was. Only that John and I must go at the top of our speed. And that it was for the sake of the mistress. There was one thing that I did know. Little Joe Green was heartbroken and in need of something more than medicine to set him right. John, I'm not a bad boy. I know that what happened to Beauty was all my doing, but I truly did the best I knew. If Beauty had died... I know full well you're not a bad boy, Joe. I know, too, that you meant no harm. But this horse is the pride of my heart. And to say nothing of its being a favorite with the master and the mistress, to think that his life was nearly flung away... I did not know. It was only ignorance. Only ignorance. Ignorance can be the worst thing in the world next to wickedness. And which causes the most mischief, heaven only knows. Know what you're doing before you leap into it, Joe. Next time... Next time? Do you mean that there will be a next time, John? That's right. There'll have to be if I'm to make you the finest groom in all the land, eh? Perhaps Joe Green would become the finest groom in all the land. I wasn't to be around to help him, though. Our lives were to all take different paths. I had lived in this happy place for three years, but sad changes were to come over us. Our mistress was failing in her health every day, and the master was moving her to the warmth of the country upon doctor's orders. I've given Mary Legs to the vicar on the promise that he'd never be so. The vicar's children love that little horse. Ginger and Black Beauty have been sold to the Earl of Richard. Please see that they arrive there. John, young Joe, we shall all miss you both. Very much. And we you, sir. Goodbye, beauty, my friend. You are a good neighbor. Ginger, I never told you properly, but I have always liked you. I have always liked you too, short one. Goodbye, Merry Legs. Keep giving the children happy little rides. As a new horses, your lordship. Mm, handsome animals they are, too. I must return to her ladyship, so my man, uh, Reuben Smith, here will attend to them. There isn't a better pair of horses in the country, and I'm right grieved to part with them. Uh, I must mention that we've never used the bearing rein on either of them. The black one has never had one on, and the chestnut came to us with a temper because of being forced to wear one. If they come here, they must wear that bearing rein. His lordship isn't one to care, but her ladyship is another matter. She will have her style. If her carriage horses aren't reined up tight, she will not venture out before her friends. It must be tight up when my lady rides. I'm sorry for it. Very sorry. Ginger, mind your manners and think of me now and again. I shall miss you most of all. I wish I were a rich man and could own you for myself. Keep your red eye and your temper low and baby. Now it's time to meet her ladyship. She wants to ride. Pull those horses' heads higher. They're not fit to be seen. I told you. 
I warned you. I won't do it. Steady, Ginger. We can get used to it. Never. They'll keep tightening the rein till our head snap for sure. I can't! I can't! <laughs> Horse. Unscrew the carriage pole. Cut the trace if you can't own it, shit. Some mischief, mother. It appears that your new carriage pair aren't working out too well. And they never will. I'll get another pair. What's to be done with these two? The black one will be used for errands. The hot-blooded chestnut you could do with what you want. Neither are fit to draw a lady's carriage. Hmm. Reuben. You use mm, Black Oster for what you want. I will make good use of the old Devil's Tail for my hunting. Black Oster? Devil's Tail? We had not only lost our friend John, we had lost our names. I wondered, what else were we to lose? <laughs> and, and the old Umbug gave me the black to use for my errands. <laughs> so, an errand I am running. <laughs> another innkeeper and another for my friends. <laughs> Faster, you worthless piece of horse flesh. with a master until he fetches a good price or until he's injured or broken then it's off to another master then another till he reaches the bottom of man's ugly world mind you see to it you don't get hurt get hurt get hurt You shoddy old nag. You'd better jump back from me. Because of you, I've been fired by his lordship. Fired for abusing a horse, of all things. You've ruined my life. But you'd better keep a sharp eye out for old Reuben Smith, my friend. Our roads will cross again someday. There's 300 pounds flung away for no earthly use. I dismiss Reuben for abusing the black, but I can't dismiss my own son for ruining the chestnut mare. I simply rode the horse, father. Yes, you simply rode her, until her spirit and wind were broken and her back strained. Well, the mare shall have a 12 months run and we shall see if she revives. But the black one must be sold. Oh, I can't have knees like these in my stable. Take him to a place where appearance is not much consequence. And so, here we are, ruined, in the prime of our youth. You by a drunkard and I by a fool. Is this how it ends? I wish. This is only the beginning. They'll soon take you away and I shall lose the only friend I have. Most likely we shall never see each other again. Tis a hard world, this world of man. Goodbye, Black Beauty. I wish you well. And I am probably not far behind. I became a job horse, where anyone who could pay to rent me could use me in any fashion he saw fit. No one cares if a job horse has a pair of scarred knees, just that he can work a fair share for a fair price. Ginger was right. I was sinking to the bottom of man's ugly world, yet I had further to sink. It came to pass that I was sold to a Mr. Barry, now then, Alfred, see to it that he has the best hay and the best of oats and bran. My doctor told me to ride a good horse to get some exercise, and I want a healthy horse beneath me. The best that money can buy, Mr. Barry? The best, Mr. Smirk. I know nothing of horses, but it seems that buying them the best cannot be a mistake. The best. <laughs> That's a laugh. You're well past needing the best, you old plug. On the other hand, Alfred Smirk here can put that money to good use for the ladies' fair. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Mr. Barry, did you enjoy your ride, sir? To be honest, no. I don't know what the matter is with this horse. He goes very fumble-footed. I sometimes fear he will stumble. I really don't know much of horses, but doesn't he appear a trifle thin to you, Alfred? To me, sir? Oh, no, sir. I've been buying the best food I can, Mr. Barry. However, the, uh, the price of good oats and bran has gone up considerable. Really? Here, then. Take some extra money and buy the best for him. Mr. Barry, what has fallen upon this horse? I saw him last on the day you bought him. And what I see before me now is but that horse's ghost. My groom, Alfred, tells me that the price of a good meal is partly to blame. Forgive me, sir, but the man is a liar. The price remains the same. It's not so much the price that has done this, but the amount. This horse hasn't been fed, and his feet, sir, he has the thrush. I dare say his stable hasn't been swept clean in months. Your man, Alfred, is rapidly killing this horse. A new coat, Alfred. You shall be the height of fashion behind bars. You have robbed me, sir, and you nearly robbed this horse of his life. You're going to jail. And I am going to rent a horse in the future. There was a time when I would have stood out from the rest as a champion. That time was long ago. Now I could barely stand at all. Well, old chap, I think we should suit each other. Good night, Governor. Hello. You got a good one, Jenny? I think so. In time. Holly, Harry, Dolly, come here and meet our new partner. Is he gentle, Father? As gentle as a kitten. Come on, pet him. Well, what shall we call him, Father? Let's see now. Well, how about Jack, under the old one? Oh, Jack's a wonderful name. Just like a real Jack. Oh, I love it. I had again lost my name, but I had also lost the bearing rein and the cruel snap of the whip. What a blessing Jerry Barker was. Yeah, get there. Yeah. Look, look sharp. I am rather late. Put on the steam, and here's an extra shilling in it for you. I'll take you at the regular pace, but no faster. Then I shall take another wiser cabby. No, Jack. Surely he wouldn't pay for that sort of thing, would it, old boy? If a thing can be done, it can be done right. If it's wrong, it can be done with art. A good man will find a way, eh, Jack? Hello, Jerry. What's this? No work for you today? No, not a day. It's Sunday, and I won't lose my Sunday for any amount of money. It's a day of rest, eh, Jack? <laughs> with my harness off, I didn't know what to do first whether to eat grass or roll over on my back or lie down and rest or have a gallop across the meadow. So I did them all. I was lucky to have found Jerry Barker and he to have found me. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merry, 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 merry life is but a dream. Whoa, Jack. Hello, Barker. Sam. Do much good this fine Sunday? Not enough to make a difference. If I owned a horse like you, instead of renting a job horse, then I could keep me profits. As it is, I spend most of what I make to pay for the rental of this bag of horse bones. <coughs> <coughs> Ginger, is that you? <coughs> oh, Black Beauty, you look well. I am. But you... I've come to the end of my time. All I wish is to be dead and free of the beatings and work. 
You used to stand up for yourself when you were ill-used. That time in the bearing range. That was a lifetime ago. It's no use. Men are the strongest. And if they are cruel and have no feeling, there's nothing a horse can do but bear it. I have seen dead horses, and I am sure that they feel no pain. That is what I want. Goodbye, Black Beauty. You are the only friend I ever had. Good morning to you, Governor. Well, you just brought a sad face. Did you hear about C.D. Sam, Jenny? No, how is he? He's gone, just snuffed out. He died at four o'clock this morning. His last words were, I never had a Sunday's rest. It's Ginger. Oh. Steady, Jack. As empty as I felt, I hoped that that horse was Ginger. I hoped it was, but then her troubles would be over. I tried to imagine what would become of me if I didn't have Jerry. Soon, I wouldn't have to imagine. I vote for lunchtime. How about you, Jack? Excuse me, sir, but which way might St. Thomas's Hospital be? I come to London from the country and I don't know the streets as yet. Poor little fella. He suffers a great deal of pain. Oh, yes. He is but five years old, but can't walk any more than a baby. The doctor said if I could get him to hospital, he might get well. Oh, pray, sir, how far is it? Which is the way? I miss is it three miles from here. You can't get there by carrying that heavy child through these crowds. Oh, I'm strong, thank God. And if I knew the way, I'd think I could get there somehow. Now, look here. Just get in the cab. I'll drive you safe to the hospital. Oh, I can't do that. I've no money to pay for the ride. Now, look here, missus. I've nippers of my own. I'll be ashamed of myself to let a woman and child run a risk like that. Now, get into the cab, and I'll take you there for free. Oh, thank you, sir. You're so kind. This cab's already engaged, gentlemen, by this lady. The lady can wait. Our business is more important. No business is more important than hers. Who will pay you twice what she pays you? It's impossible to pay me even half of what she pays. <laughs> God bless you, sir. He already has, many times. Barker? Jerry Barker, can it be you? Mrs. Fowler? Oh, I hope you're well, ma'am. My Polly speaks to you warmly every night in her prayers. Sound as can be expected, Jerry. And you, how do you find the cab work suits you in the winter? I knew that Polly was anxious about your illness last winter. Yes, and the, the cold and my lungs don't get along all that well, but... Uh, but the cab's all I've ever known. Well, it would be a pity that you should risk your health in this work. Think of your Polly and the children. If ever you wish to work in the warmth of the country, you may work for me. My horses would forever be grateful for such a groom as you, Jerry Barker. I must be off now. Consider my offer and give my best to your dear Polly. Let's try and forget the cold, Jack, eh? And, <coughs> and, and think of the, the supper Polly's keeping warm for us. Eh? You know, <coughs> that offer of Mrs. Fowler sounds very good on our eyes. I won't be able to take you along, old friend. And nothing, <coughs> nothing, nothing will break up our team. <coughs> This was the saddest day I was ever to know. Jerry Barker was the kindest man I had met in my life. Ginger was wrong when she said that all men were our natural enemies. Jerry was the best friend 
I ever had. What are we to do, Mrs. Fowler? You're to come and live with me in the country, Polly. You'll not need anything for the rest of your days. I'll see to it. Pardon me, ma'am. Allow me to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Nicholas Skinner, a uh, baker by trade. Can't you see the woman is grieving, Skinner? Yes, and uh, sorry I am to hear of a Mr. Barker. But you see, ma'am, I've come to make a business proposition. And after hearing what the mistress fellows just said, it seems to me that I can achieve my business and do you a kind of favor at the same time. Leave your poor woman be, Skinner. I shall, presently, Governor. Uh, Mrs. Barker, I would like to purchase the black horse called Jack. He would be of great use to me in my deliveries and with your moving to the country and all. So, Jack, my Jerry loved that sweet horse. And I would care for him with the same feeling. I'll give you my word, missus. You won't be needing Jack in the country, Polly. Let the man use him for his work. Your Jerry would understand. He was a hard-working man himself. All right, Mr. Skinner. But I'll have your word that no harm or ill use will come to him. That you have, Mum. That you have. Goodbye, Jack, old boy. Be good, Jack. We'll miss you. Stand away, children. The horse belongs to me now. Get on, you lazy nag, or I'll make you. Get on, I say. If you're doing your best, you'd better do something more than your best. In little more than five months of hard work, you've gone from nothing to less than nothing. Why I thought I wanted you in the first place amazes me. Why anyone would want you. I want that horse. Hey, and who might you be? My name is Reuben Smith. But then I think your horse knows that all too well. What would you be willing to pay for this fine horse, Mr. Smith? I will trade you my horse, a truly fine horse, in comparison to yours. Done. And I hope you'll be happy with your new horse. I will be. Believe me, I will be. Can your horse carry us and our luggage, Cabby? I mean, he looks so weak and worn out. Oh, he's all right, sir. He's strong enough. Can your horse do it or not, Cabby? He'll do it, sir. I'll see to it. If you cost me this fare, you'll be the one to pay. Move. He's dead. You'll never get up again. Look at the black one. He's only fit for the dogs. <laughs> if the dogs would have him. That one. That's the one I want, Father. Poor old fellow. He's been overworked terribly. But see how well he understands kindness. Could we not buy him and make him young again? Hmm. This is just like the star that Black Beauty had. He is much the same height, too. I wonder where he is now. Could I have him? Please, Father. White star in the forehead, one white foot on the offside, and as I am alive, there is that little patch of white hair that John used to call Beauty's Threepenny Bit. It must be Black Beauty. Oh, Beauty, Beauty. Do you know me? Joe Green, the little boy who almost killed you. Oh, who was the rascal that has done this to you? Can we take him home, Father? Yes, oh, yes. I almost took this horse's life once. Now I can give him a life. I owe this horse. What shall we call him, Father? We shall call him Black Beauty. It is his name. I named you John out of love for a man dear to me. Name should be given out of love. And I love this horse, this Black Beauty. Here is where we live now, Beauty. Here is where you shall live happy and love for the rest of your life. Will you teach me how to care for Black Beauty, Father? I will, John. I hope I can learn. I hope I will do what is right. Just remember this, John. 
do your best and leave the rest. Twill all come right someday or night. Do your best and leave the rest. Twill all come right someday or night. It was the meadow, my meadow. I had come home at last.